really like the opening. Before the credits hit, they just have Kane in the back, geeing up all of the, the well, the entire tag team division, which is quite sad to see them all in one place. And yeah, they're going to have a tag team turmoil match tonight. I like Kane in this role where he's just like backstage dude. Let's just keep him out of the ring. Let's put him more in this role. This this will be more satisfactory to my likes. This is better to me. But regardless, really like this. It's a quick opening, then the credits hit, and then we go straight into a match. So I'm <laughs> it might have been really short, but I'm going to give this a hop to start with because this is how more shows should start. Quick thing, teasing what's coming up in the show, and then boom, into the wrestling. Then we get match number one, which is Bray Wyatt versus R-Truth, and I was like, oh, this is going to last five seconds as a squash match. But no, this is not a squash match. This is a decent match. Crowd are well into it. They're really hot for R-Truth, going along with his catchphrase and his singing. And yeah, R-Truth puts on a good show, gets the moves in. Of course, Bray gets the win as he should, if he's going to fight The Undertaker. Still not confirmed. But, yeah, strong showing from both guys. This is a better than a squash match, is like having a competitive match and a victor. It's much better to be a someone than a no one. Haven't seen Summer Rae in a while, and she's ver facing? She is facing Paige. Uh, the Bellas are on commentary. And they're talking about themselves, fine, they're doing the, like, douchey valley girl thing. Um, Paige and Summer, short match, but fairly decent. Can't really have any complaints about it. What I liked was it was just a clear victory for Paige, making her look like a strong competitor. While the Bellas didn't interfere, they just watched the match and acted smug. Oh, I, I was so expecting it to be like, oh, we're going to distract you. Oh, you got rolled up and lost again. Glad they didn't go that route and just had a good match. So I'm going to give this a hot just because I didn't, I, I was happy that there was no roll up predictable finish. And then we get the Smackdown exclusive rivalry of Fandango versus Adam Rose and Adam Rose is just full on heel. Goes to do his fall back or trust fall and he's like nah screw it. While Fandango is kind of baby face this is where the commentary team should be chipping in. If they are turning Fandango babyface, this is where they should be stepping in and like saying, oh yeah, Fandango's actually had a bit of a change of heart lately. He's decided he wants to dance for the fans, that kind of thing. But no, there's no mention. So the crowd are a bit meh on whether he's turning. This is sort of the same match from last week. Not much happens. So this is going to be warm. It wasn't a terrible match. And Adam Rose, I think he's doing really well as a heel. But Fandango either needs to make it a bit more apparent that he is babyface now, or be heel. Pick a, pick a side. Well, match number four slash our main event is literally the second half of SmackDown. It's tag team turmoil, Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns kicking it off. And yeah, the, I love this. This was good booking. They start off against Miz and Miz now. Um... A uh, short match, but gets things started. Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns just trying to outdo each other. Trying to outshine, look better than the other guy. Then we get the really interesting bulk of the match. The Usos versus Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. It's really good. This is really good storytelling. A match that has booking that makes sense. Now we've admitted that Roman Reigns is related to all every single Samoan ever. This makes sense. You've got just a competitive match between Daniel and the Usos. And it gets to a certain point where Daniel Bryan has just dived out the ring, taken out one of the Usos, and is just kicking the beep out of the other Uso. And then Roman Reigns walks over and is like, Not like this, damn it! In the ring! They're my cousins! And it's like showing the family ties. Roman Reigns doesn't mind them getting beaten, but as long as it's in the ring and fairly. Like, Daniel Bryan has just lost it. He's just angry, kicking away. So that does a bit of tension between them. Roman Reigns doesn't want to tag in. He's like, again, man, they're my cousins. Just finish this. And, yeah, the match builds and builds and builds. Of course, it's a two-on-one because Reigns won't tag in. So the Usos are about to get the pin, but Reigns cannot stop standing in. Pushes them off. The cousins are like, hey, why are you doing that? We're about to win. It's like, I'm still your opponent, cuz. But then the Usos 
strike Roman Reigns and the fire is lit. We get good teamwork between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns here as they pin our tag team champions. This was good! You didn't just have your tag team's champions looking like chumps. They look good against your two like main eventers of the Axe pay-per-view. This is a good way to elevate them. Helps everyone out. And then basically we go through the rest of the tag team division soon. The Matadors come out, which Daniel Bryan deals with solo. Managing to beat them both. And then straight after that, Slater Gator come out and Roman Reigns just handles them. So those two teams look like chumps, but... Well, let's be honest, the first time we've seen Slater Gator in months, so... Uh, until they give them a bit more build-up, there's no point dealing with them. And then we get the Ascension. Who, they, this is a smart thing, you don't want them just to get destroyed. So the Ascension just go on the offensive and just get themselves DQ'd and just continue a beat down, weakening Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, of course, for the final confrontation, which is Big Show and piss off Kane and Big Show, just piss off. Oh, I wish it could have been anyone but these two, but it made sense, I suppose, with the storyline and the section at the beginning. So, of course, our tag uh our uh, number one contenders, yeah, I think that's safe enough to say. Number one contenders are getting beaten down, they're just at a disadvantage. But then, for no reason, Kane and Big Show start arguing. Big Show just wants to have fun and punish them, while Kane just wants to get the job done. This is a lame reason to start fighting. But as Daniel Bryan never gives up and just keeps, just having those, keeps locking in the submission, keeps getting a roll up. Big Show and Kane start getting really agitated with each other to the point where Kane grabs him, Big Show, BAM! Knocks him out. And then Kane... No, not Kane. Kane's knocked out. Then Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns work together. Spear, flying knee, and they win the day. Wish it was anyone but Kane and Big Show and their, their descent was really not a strong booking. But... After the match, you get Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan just looking at the WrestleMania sign, looking at each other, showing respect, mutual respect. This is the thing I wanted all along. If we had just had this, where these two had just been, like, competing against each other every show, like, doing time limit matches, doing, like, put Daniel Bryan in, like, sort of against a big guy, put Roman Reigns in a match with a submission guy, and like Roman Reigns can only win by submission and vice versa. That could have been more interesting than just doing pointless handicap matches constantly. But this I liked. This is the best thing they've done with them so far. So, that match slash half of the show is a hot. And I'm giving this show a hot overall because I think everything worked. The only thing was the Adam Rose and Fandango, which is a. Uh, but I also like because it's an exclusive storyline to SmackDown. I think we should need to start getting that again. It's almost... I don't want the brands to split off, but let's give the mid-card a chance on SmackDown to do high-level, do intense storylines. Not that this is an intense one, but it's a start. So, yes. That's my opinion of SmackDown. I am excited for Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Bit worried about what Raw's going to do to them. Let's just bring this up. This was a good thing, WWE. And uh, let me know your opinions in the comment section below or at the side or wherever, or on my Facebook page, which is in the doobly-doo below. And until next time, like, subscribe, and TTFN!